Responsive design is key. Now let's build daily interaction number 23. Hey, what's up everyone? John with Web Dev for you and welcome to the daily interaction series where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Uh, today we're going to be building something that I think a lot of designers and developers would like to know about and that's a scroll to top button. Uh, so here when I scroll down, we have section two, uh, section three, section four, and once we get to section four, in the lower right, we have this back to top button. And if I click on it, it brings us back to the top of the page. Uh, so it's a simple effect, but it's really useful uh, because if there's a lot of scrolling space to the site, the user can just click on the button to go back to the top. All right, so yeah, this is what we will be building today. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build out all the sections and add the button. And then we're gonna link the button to the first section. So it links, yeah, so it goes to the top when we click on it, and then we'll add the interaction. Uh, so here we'll, we'll start with the daily interaction uh, class naming convention. Uh, so it's d dash the daily interaction number. So today is 23 and then the element. So every element on this site will have a D-23 in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes. And so that we know we're working with daily interaction number 23. Okay, so the first thing I'll do here is add a section. So I'll add an element. I'll add a section and I'll give it the class name D-23 uh, section-1 and I'll give it a height of 100 VH. And I'll scroll down to background. I'll set the background color to black. I'll scroll up to display setting, give it a display setting of flex, uh, horizontal, justify center, and align center. Uh, so anything I place within this section will be in the center. Then I'll add a kind of a, a subheading just so we know, so we can name each section. So here I'll scroll down to typography and I'll give it a heading and I'll give it an H3 heading for like a subheading uh, there. And I'll give it uh, the class name D-23 H3 uh, text. And I will yeah set the typography to circular bold um, here, change the color to white and I'll double click in here and just name it section one. All right, so we know this is section one and I'll leave the font size at 24 pixels and the line height at 30 pixels. All right, so now let's add uh, three more sections. Um, I could copy and paste this section and just give it a combo class to change the background color um, like we have in the demo. So we have three, uh, four sections with different colors. Um, but when, whenever I add a section, I like to give it its own class. Uh, this just lets me know which section I'm working on within the navigator. So I can name each section like section one, two, three, and four. And this just helps me to stay organized when I'm building uh, a site. So here I'll select the body and I'll add an element. I'll add another section and I'll give it the class name D-23 section dash two. And we'll just repeat the process for, for what we did for the first section. So I'll say 100 VH for the height. And for this, I'll set the background color uh, to blue. And so we have the section here and I'll give it a display setting of flex, horizontal, justify center and align center. I'll select the text here, just hit command C to copy, select section two and paste. And then I'll just rename this to section two. All right, so let's add section three and four. So here I'll select the body. I'll add an element, I'll add a section. And yeah, let's just repeat that. D-23, section-3. So we notice in the navigator, because I'm naming them section one, two, and three, I can see it here in the navigator. And that just helps me know that I'm working with a certain amount of sections. All right, um, so yeah, let's go to the height and I'll set it to 100 VH and the background color to the slight pink. 
display setting flex justify center line center copy the text paste in there and we have section three and then one last time so i'll add a section and i'll name it d-23 section dash four give it a height of 100 bh so it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well and uh yeah i'll set the color here to magenta and display setting of flex justify center and align center yeah so by setting each section to 100 vh um, it becomes the full height of the viewport yeah and it'll be the full width so it covers the entire viewport um, there i'll paste and i'll rename this to section four all right so yeah there we just got some practice adding sections um yeah so we just added four sections uh section one two three and four all right so now let's add the button in the bottom right um so for this I'm going to add the button to the body so it say, stays fixed in the in the viewport or in the browser. So I'll select the body, I'll add an element, and I'll select a link block. So the reason we're selecting a link block is because we can link it out to a URL, a page, page section, email, telephone number, or a file. Yeah, or a file. So we're going to link to a page section, so we want a link block. All right, so I'll just close this here. And I'll give it the class name D-23 back to top. Uh, we're we're going to call it a wrapper because we're going to place an arrow inside of it. Um, so yeah, D-23 back to top wrapper. For this, I'm going to give it a width of 50 pixels by 50 pixels. And I'm going to set it to a position of fixed so we can always see it. And I'm going to place it in the bottom right. Okay, so here I'll select bottom right. So position of fixed and in the bottom right. So here we see the div block um, or the link block. It's right here in the bottom right. Then I'll scroll down to border. I'll give it a solid border. I'll set the color to white and I'll give it a width of five pixels. So there we see the square, it's right there. And for the radius, I'm gonna give it a radius of 50%. So it becomes a perfect circle. So to create a perfect circle, you can just enter in half the size of the square or 50%. Um, yeah, so the square is 50 by 50. So you, so you could either enter in 25 pixels or 50% to have it be a perfect circle. All right, so there we have the circle. Um, and I'm going to give it a display setting of flex, uh, justify center, and align center. So anything I place within this link block will be in the center. So now I want to add an arrow inside of this link block. So I'm going to add an element. I'm going to add uh, a text block and we're going to be using the font awesome icon set to add an arrow. Uh, I'm not going to cover how to install the font awesome uh, icon set in this video. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I might make another video on how to do that. Um, but yeah, you simply, yeah, you just go to fontawesome.com and install it into Webflow. Uh, but if you have any questions about that, let me know in the comment section below or in the forum section for this video and I'll quickly go over that. Uh, but yeah, so we have the text there. So what I'm going to do is go to fontawesome.com and I'm going to type in arrow up. So we have an up arrow. Hit enter. And yeah, so search. And here we have the arrow up. So I'll select it. And here what I want to do is uh, hover over this arrow icon here. So here we have the arrow and I'll ho hover over here. And it says click to copy Unicode glyph. So I want to copy this, the Unicode glyph. So it says copied. So I'll go back into Webflow. I'll double click in the text block and I'll hit Command V to paste. Uh, so right now it's just a square and I'll go ahead and give it a class name. I'll give it the class name D-23 back to top arrow. And here for the font, um, I'll select the font and I'll select the uh, font awesome solid 900. So uh, we can see the arrow here, so I'll select it, and I can see it in my uh, in my fonts here because I've installed it into Webflow. So I'll select it here, and we notice the arrow is blue and it has uh, an underline under it. So to change that, let's go into the navigator, select the back to top wrapper, or the link block, and I'll scroll down to typography, and for the underline, I'll say none. So it removes the underline. And then I'll go ahead and change the color for the arrow. So in the navigator, I'll select it, go into styles, and for the color, we'll change it to white. 
and I'll give it a size of let's say 20 pixels and the line height of 24 to give it a little bit of spacing. So there we have the, the circle with the arrow and I'm just gonna add some margin to the, to the right and the left so it's not so close to the corner of the viewport. So from the bottom, just add 40 pixels of margin and from the right, 40 pixels of margin. So if I preview and I scroll, we can see that that button stays fixed right here. And let me give it 30 pixels actually, 40 might be a bit too much. Yeah, 30 pixels from the right and the bottom. Yeah, so that button is right there in the bottom right, it stays fixed. And now what we can do is link this uh, button to section one. So when we scroll down to the bottom and we click, the site goes back to the top. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is give section one an ID so that we can link the button to that ID. So here I'll select section one in the designer or I can select it in the navigator. Then I'll go to element settings and uh, here for the ID, I'll give it the ID section dash one. So by giving it an ID, it'll show up in the page section of the link. All right, so section one is the, the ID. So I can select the link block here or the, uh, the back to top wrapper. And again, in the element settings, uh, we can link to URL, uh, page, or here is the page section. Uh, we can also link to email, phone number, or file, but yeah, we wanna link to a page section. So I'll select it here. And the section, it says choose a, choose a page section. And we can see that the ID section one is now in this drop down, And that's because we gave that ID to the first section. If we hadn't given it to the first section, we wouldn't see it here. Uh, but now we can select it. So I'll select it here. So now when we click on this link block, it'll take us to section one. So I'll preview, I'll scroll down. And if I click, we go all the way back to the top. All right, so the last thing we need to do is set the interaction. So I want this arrow to not be visible initially. And when we scroll down to the, the center or the middle of section four, like right here, I want the arrow to appear. And when we go past this uh, center point here, I want the arrow to, or this button to disappear. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So here I'll go into the navigator. Um, you would think we would apply an interaction to the back to top wrapper, but we're actually gonna have section four be the interaction trigger. So once section four is visible, the button will appear. So I'll select section four. I'll go into interactions and it's gonna be an element trigger because section four is the element that's gonna trigger the, the back to top button. So here for element trigger, I'll click the plus and I'll select scroll into view. So animate when element scrolls into view. So here I'll select it. And when scrolled into view, we're going to start an animation. So I'll select uh, an action, I'll start an animation. And we're gonna add a new timed animation. So I'll click the plus. And I'll name this here to D-23, uh, scroll, yeah, back to top uh, in. So when, um, when we, yeah, when we scroll down. Um, and for the timed action, so initially I want the back to top, back to top wrapper to not be visible. So I'll select it here in the navigator, go back into interactions. I'll add a new timed action and I'll select opacity. And for the opacity, I'm gonna set it to zero so we don't see it initially. And for the timing, I'm gonna set it as the initial state. So when we first uh, view the site, we don't see the back to top button. Um, and then once we scroll to section four, I want it to come back to an opacity of 100%. So it's already set here, 100%. And I'll change the easing to ease and a duration of one, so it comes in a bit smoother. All right, so easing of ease and one and set it to 100%. So initially it starts at 0%. Once we get to section four, it'll come in to 100%. So let me scroll back to the top. So I'll preview, I'm scrolling. And once we get to section four, we see the button appear and we can go back to the top. So again, I'll preview, we scroll down so once section four comes into view, the button appears. Um, so that's okay, but I would want the button to appear once we get to the center 
of section four. So once this text is visible, I want the button to appear. So we can set an offset so the button appears when we're 50% into section four. So let's go back into the interaction. I'm gonna close this here. And here we have an offset. So for, for the offset, I'm gonna set it to 50%. Okay, so once we get to the middle of section four, then the button will appear. All right, so I'll preview, scroll down, and notice the button hasn't appeared, but once we get to the middle of section four, the button appears and perfect. All right, so one more time, we get to the middle of section four and it appears, looks good. So the last thing we need to do is have the button disappear once we move past the middle of section four when we're scrolling up. So to do that, we'll go into when scrolled out of view. So here we're going to select an action, start an animation, um, I'll add a new timed animation and I'll name this D-23 back to top uh, out. And here for timed actions, um, yeah, first we'll select the back to top wrapper, go into interactions and I'll add a new timed action and I'll set the opacity to, yeah, I'll set a timed action of opacity and set it to 0%. All right, so we, we no longer see it and I'll add an easing of ease and a duration of one second. Okay, so yeah, there we go. And I also want to set the offset to 50% so that when it gets halfway past or halfway to section four, it starts to disappear. So the scrolled into view is when we're scrolling down, it appears and when we're scrolling back up, that's the scroll out of view. And the appearing point and the disappearing point for the button are in the same location, which is the center of section four because we added the offset of 50%. All right, so let me scroll back to the top. I'll preview, I'll scroll down. The button appears, I can click on it. And once it goes past the center of section four, it disappears. So I can scroll back up. We see it disappears, scroll back down, it appears. All right, looks good. So that's all there is to it, to creating a back to top button uh, in Webflow. So we added the sections, we added the back to top button. Uh, you wanna make sure it's a link block so you can link it to a certain section. And we gave the ID uh, section one to this section and yeah, linked this button to section one via the element settings. Um, yeah, so element settings in Webflow. So we uh, set page section and linked it to section one. Um, so yeah, you can, you can choose any element on your site to be the interaction trigger for the button. Here I just chose the section, but if you wanted to pick a really specific point on your site for when the button appears, you would just apply the scroll into view interaction to that element. Um, and then you could set an offset even if you wanted to for that element and get a really precise location for when the button appears. All right, looks good. So yeah, that's it for daily interaction uh, number 23. I'll do it one more time here. The button appears, scroll to the top, and we can scroll back down and scroll to the top. So if your site has a lot of scrolling space, it's a really useful button for the user to be able to go back to the top. All right, looks good. So that is it for daily interaction number 23, the scroll to top button uh, when the user scrolls to the bottom of the page. So to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.